Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're gonna take a look into the Gondor faction of the Lord of the Rings, the battle for Middle-earth 1. We're gonna focus on the build order, we're gonna focus on our power points and on our heroes. Gondor, unlike Rohan, which has only 7 spots in his base, and unlike Isengard and Mordor, those factions have 8 spots in their base, Gondor but, but Gondor has 9 spots in his base. So you have always 1 up to 2 more spots than your opponent, which is amazing. Soldier. We're gonna start the game with two soldiers. Soldiers are the second strongest starting units in the game battle for Middle-earth 1. They are slightly weaker than Urukai, also slower than Urukai, Keep but going. they are stronger than peasants and orcs. Just like Urukai, Beyond you can also God. switch the battle formation to the block formation, Defensive which is gonna position. increase your armor and also gonna change the visual look of those units. Uh, gonna make them tankier, but they're gonna lose a lot of movement speed, which again is not gonna matter that much if you're gonna stand still and fight like a man. Line it up, man. Uh, and I think regardless against what faction you are playing, you wanna always start with a farm and a blacksmith. Against Mordor situationally, you can also start with two farms instead, because upgrades don't matter that much. The reason why you wanna start with a blacksmith, blacksmith always is in order to buy upgrades farm with the Gondor faction, you need to always get your blacksmith to level 2. So if you don't make a blacksmith at the beginning of the game, you need to wait um, for the blacksmith to hit level 2. And that might take a while, if you are gonna go for the structure like one minute later, you will be able to buy your upgrades one minute later, and time matters a lot in Battle for Middle-earth 1. Um, if you buy the farm and the blacksmith at the beginning of the game, you always need to buy, regardless against which faction you are playing, the Hobbit Pippin. Pippin has incredible amount of impact in the beginning of the game against those starting, starting units like soldiers, peasants, orcs, and even against Urukai. Now you need to ask yourself, who am I playing enough. against? If you are playing against Rohan, what you need to do on a map like Falls of Eisen is you want to defend your own farms. If, however, you are playing against Mordor and or against Isengard, you want to push with your soldiers Ready through the middle going. or through the top sides Move if you are on. playing the left side. If you are playing on the right side, you want to push through the middle or through the bottom side. And your goal at the beginning of the game is always going to be to take down those lumber mills from your opponent. Uh, while the I Hobbit is going to take bacon. those two settlements which are pretty much free to take. Uh, evil factions like Isengard and Mordor, they will try to defend their mills. If you are playing against Isengard, we're going to take a look into the power points. You want to always start with the Elven Mood which is not only increasing your armor for your soldiers at the beginning of the game, but also for your Gondor Knights later on by 40%, that means they're gonna get stronger. But enemy leadership, and that's the really important thing here with the Elven Wood, gonna lose their leadership bonuses. And unlike Mordor, who will be easily able to cover that Elven Wood from yours with his very own Tainted Lands, Isengard can't do that at the beginning of the game. With that being said, Elven Wood can't be blocked the first one not, and most of the time also the second one not. So you want to play around your Elven Wood when the enemy uses the War Chants and makes those Urukai and War Riders or whatsoever stronger. You can't fight them otherwise, so you want to use the Elven Wood and you want to fight only and exclusively on your Elven Wood. The next structure, after you grab both the farms outside and you have Blacksmith and a farm inside, you want to go for another farm. The reason for that is the farms are giving you food bonus which is gonna make your cavalry You're units, in this me. case those Gondor Knights, a bit cheaper. And Gondor Knights are units you wanna always use first when you are playing 1v1 or 2v2. Okay, beautiful. After you are sending your soldiers forward against the evil faction, and after being potentially able to take down one of the lumber mills, depends on the skill level from your opponent, you can also use your Hobbit's Pippin, either to go forward and snipe down some of those Lumber Mill workers, or what you can also do Follow is me. switch to the rock with the R key on your keyboard. Can you can start them. creeping from a safe distance. If you keep this angle, those works, they won't be able to see your Hobbit, and it's gonna take you a while, but you will be potentially able to take it down. That's gonna give you some decent amount of power points. Hobbit is gonna oh, get level 3 after that, and you will get also a decent amount of treasure. Sometimes the works are able to see you and they're gonna attack you and what you need to do is just go back a bit They're gonna lose you as an attack target and then they're gonna go back to the lair and you can keep doing that all the time All right, you have now a blacksmith two farms inside your base two farms outside of your base 
we are waiting a lot because we are talking all the time but normally you won't have that much money you want to save now for 800 resources and i would go for the stable right there the reason why i'm building stables here and the wall here by the way is because i want my gondonites being able to come out immediately like i said before time matters a lot in battle from the global, okay ready. And I'm talking about the soldiers, Keep when you right click them like that, they're gonna move like Go! this. But if you have a target, and we know for example on this area we have war creeps, you can press the G key on your keyboard and guard this area by right clicking. And then you can see now they are drawing the swords and they're gonna become a bit faster. Always play with your guard key Stay and together. also when it comes for example to defend your farm and you don't want to watch too much. If you are a lazy person like me, you can always say, okay, I want my units to guard this specific area. The soldiers Prepare have a small guarding re uh, ratio, but those Gondonites, and we're gonna take a look into them, they have a lot. Hmm. Hobbit in the meantime was, by the way, able to creep. After the creep, the works, they're gonna stand still, so you can just easily target them. They want, I mean, unless you're gonna really go close to them, uh, they won't chase you in a situation like this. The Hobbit is gonna get really strong. You wanna get you're gonna get some money from that, which is really great. After your horses, what you wanna do is build multiple blacksmiths in your base. Again, the reason for that is because we want to get those upgrades cheaper. And if we have in total one, two, three, four, Ride five blacksmiths, we're gonna get our upgrades 30% cheaper. Riders. Right now they're gonna cost 510, but if you have all this up, we have you know they're gonna cost only 410 if you don't have any blacksmiths the upgrades gonna be very expensive Riders. after making three horses that's pretty much the magical number because that's gonna be the number you're gonna need for the for the stable to hit level two to unlock the night shield upgrade you can also demolish one of those farms because you're not gonna make more horses in this case and replace that with a blacksmith instead to have the maximum value of the blacksmiths steel bonus and get those upgrades 40 percent cheaper uh, Gondor Knights, as you can see, have a larger guarding area than the soldiers. This is the soldier, and this is the Gondor Knights. And other units like, for example, Heroes or Rohirrim Archers, they have a really great amount of guarding area, which is amazing. Hobbit, hmm. really small. <laughs> so you can also work with that. Hobbit is gonna be able to see that work when you are, you know, pressing the G key on your keyboard um, and guarding an area. Um, then you want to use your Gondonites to pressure the Lumber Mills again, like, you know, when you are playing against Isengard or Mordor. That's the only, the, that's the first target right. you want to go for. Let's go. You want to go forward Together. and you want to go to the settlement. Because evil factions are scaling super hard in Battle for Middle-earth 1 and Gondor Together. has to deny that from happening. So the, er, the first Come thing on. what you need to do with those Gondonites is go forward. forward. Um, before the Gondonite comes out or right after you want to go for the second Gondonite, before you fill up your base. So one Gondonite, second Gondonite and afterwards fill up your base with blacksmiths guys, okay? I'm working always with um, keys, so I'm grouping Swords. them and saying control one. So I can they always, you know, if I watch my soldiers right now, I can Riders. press double press on the, on the one and I will be able to see them. Riders. Grab the settlements Forward. for yourself and now we're gonna go for the creep. With the Gondor Knights, you can easily creep the work layers, and I will show you guys Men how to Gondor. do that without losing too much time and health. Four. Be careful. Okay, Riders. there is a work creep, Ride. so what you want to do is you want to lure them away. Four. You want to kill the works first. Hit the enemy. Let's go. That was a terrible start, by the way, for the creep. Um, you want to kill the works first. That's really terrible from me. <laughs> That's not going to be the example I wanted to do, but they're going to still be able to do that. Normally, you don't want to lose three units of yours, and that's going to be unfortunately the case here. After you are done, you can always switch the Gondor Knights to the Vetch Formation to maximize their damage output. If everything goes wrong, you have still the heal, uh, heal spell. Now we're going to take a look as the Gondor Knights are creeping into our power points, okay? So, against Rohan and Gondor, I would always start with the heal into the Gandalf of the White. Gandalf of the White is the most powerful hero and the most expensive hero, by the way, in Battle for Middle Earth 1. I know you guys gonna type now in the comment section below, Riders. yeah, but Shanks, Witch King Ride. is like, more expensive. Onward. No, he's not. Because Witch Riders. King doesn't require you to get another power point only for him to be actually effective in the game, you know? Gandalf without the Gandalf of the White is not Gandalf, you know what I'm saying, right? So what you wanna do is go for the heal into potentially the Summon Elven Elias or Gandalf of the White. Depends on how late the game is and if the elves gonna, you know, make a difference or not. Uh, summons like Elven Allies, they are impactful at the beginning of the game a lot. They can kill a lot of stuff, but once it, it's late game and the enemy has a lot of upgrades and really strong units, the Elven Allies is not gonna be that effective anymore. However, 
if you are playing against um, Mordor or if you are playing against Isengards, especially, you want to start with the Elven Wood and try to skip the heal in order to reach to the Elven allies as fast as possible. Because a good Isengard player will be spamming a lot of pikes and that's going to be a nightmare for every Gonzo player. And the Elven allies going to give you a chance to clean up the map or to go for a pot uh, potential base rush to the base of the Isengard player. With the elves, you can kill the clean up the pikes, and then you can actually go with your Gondor Knights in. If you have all the upgrades, remember the Knight Shield upgrade is gonna increase your durability against the archers, including the towers, by the way, by 75%. Nice. And while the heavy armor is gonna make you even tougher and harder to harder to kill, and the forge blades are gonna make your horses hitting like a truck. Okay, beautiful. Um, then after that, you can always go for the cloud break, but most of the time that's not gonna happen. The easiest and the fastest way to reach Army of the Dead is heal, Gandalf the White, Cloud Break, and Army of the Dead. But most of the time, the Gondor players want to go for the Eagle, which is, by the way, the strongest special summon after Balrog and Army of the Dead in the game for me. Eagles are dealing tons of damage to the heroes and taking them down in seconds, and also very effective against Balrog, by the way. So, Eagles are really hero killers, and when you are playing against Isengard, what you need to do is obviously try to snipe down the Lords before you can do anything with your guns off. Remember, Isengard has the Lords, who again has the ability to cripple you down, and Gandalf is very powerful, we know that, but we also know the fact that Gandalf is really easy to kill. Okay, beautiful. Um, normally, what you want to do is you want to go for heal, guns off, elves, because elves gonna be necessary again to go for the summon uh, eagle sp special summon. Most of the time you skip this area. If you start with the elven wood, you go for elven wood, uh, elven allies, heal, eagles. Rohirrim are pretty much the last ability. If everything you know seems to be lost, if Gondor asks for help, Rohan will answer, guys. Okay, but most of the time we're gonna skip that. We're gonna go for the eagle special summon into the army of the dead. Uh, situationally, especially in the FOL mirrors, with FOL, FOL mirrors, I mean when you are playing against opponent Gondor, who also who also has Gondor knights on the field, or when you are playing against Rohan, who has a lot of Rohirrim on the field, Cloud Break might be a great choice as well. Um, because you are making the enemy units weaker, they lose a lot of armor, but important, also really important to mention, they lose a lot of movement speed. That means your Gondor Knights gonna outrun them, gonna be able to chase them and catch them and kill them, okay? With that being said, Cloud Break is situationally great, but most of the time, like 85% of the games, you will see Eagles on the field into the Army of the Dead. After Army of the Dead, and in the lead scheme, you're gonna get a lot of power points anyway. You can still go for the Rohirrim, Rohan Ally, Special Summon, and then Cloud Break afterwards, okay? Beautiful, guys. Um, talking about the other structures about the Gondor faction. So, let's see. Let's say you have three Gondor Knights on the field. You are microing them quite nicely. You have the upgrades. You have the Nightshield upgrade. Now, you can also demolish your stable if you want to. Uh, and let's say you are, for example, playing against Isengard or against Rohan, who has a really strong army, and your army can't match. Because the problem with the with the Gondor faction is actually that you lack of leadership and that your army is not the greatest army to fight with. I mean, on the bright side, you have Gunsalf, who is pretty much a one-man army, but there are gonna be situations within the game, in the leads game especially, in which Gandalf won't be that impactful anymore in those all-out fights. When the enemy has a great amount of army with a lot of leadership and, you know, they are really strong, Gandalf can't approach them anymore. With that being said, you will need some defensive units. And for that, we have two structures here, um, which are gonna be great. The most hated structure in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is definitely the Stonewalker upgrades, because with that, you can make your towers uh, on top of your walls much, much stronger, and they're gonna hit like a truck. And the next defensive structure is gonna be the Gondor Workshop. Here, you're gonna make the strongest cat cutters in the game, the trebuchets, once they have the Firestone upgrades. That's gonna also be very effective against Isengard combos, against Rohirrim Arches or whatsoever. Um, but we don't, we're not gonna underestimate the power of the Rangers of the uh, Gondor faction. They are also gonna be very strong. As Pikes, you have the Tower Guard. They are also really strong. Um, they are not very mobile like the Pikemen from Isengard, but really effective against uh, Rohirrim and Gondor Knights. And what you also can do for, in, you know, in situations, you can go for the Marketplace. But I would go for the Marketplace before I'm gonna you go for the Trebuchets and the... Uh, um, Stoneworker upgrades. 
Um, unlike Stormworker upgrades and every other structure in the game, Marketplace has to be up on the field in order to keep the upgrades you have purchased on the structure, guys. In Marketplace, you can go for the Iron, up iron Ore upgrade, which is gonna increase your resource income from those blacksmiths by 20%, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna check it in a second. And the, uh, the money from the farms outside by 40%. That means it's more rewarding the more map control you have. And if you have a great amount of map control with the Gondor faction and you have this structure inside your base, you will pretty much never run out of resources, guys. Beautiful. Okay, Stormwork uh, upgrade is the Battle Tower and Keep Arches that's gonna increase the damage output from those towers by 125%, so more than double. But on top of that, I think they're also gonna deal a bit more magic damage. That means even horses with full upgrades, they're gonna take a lot of damage from that. And they're gonna die also within seconds, by the way. And the Numenorian Stormwork upgrade is the next. That's gonna make your walls look better. We're gonna actually purchase that real fast. And the reinforced gates gonna buff your gates and it's gonna be harder to take down. Those two upgrades are absolutely fine and no one will complain about that. But this upgrade is gonna make your enemy rage on you and gonna flame you. So it's not gonna be necessary all the time, but when you have like 10,000 plus resources and you, and you don't know what else to do, you can always go for the structures. Well. Look the walls, the guys. This lot, these walls are looking sexy, by the way. Beautiful. And yeah, we have the Grand Harvest, 40% increased resources from the farms. We have the Iron Ore uh, for the blacksmiths, and we have the siege materials. Uh, for you know, whenever you're gonna lose a structure, you're gonna get 50% of that structure's cost back. That means, for example, for a stable, stable costs 800. We if your opponent is able to destroy your stable, you're gonna get 400 back, which is really great. Um, for the lazy people like me, <laughs> all right. In order to get your workshop to level four uh, to level two, that's gonna be necessary to purchase the firestone upgrades. We need to make four trebuchets. Uh, again, for the blacksmith, you need to get it level 2 as fast as possible. The beautiful part about blacksmith in compare to the farms is also that blacksmiths are a bit tankier and harder to take down. For example, in a, for a blacksmith level 2, we have here 4,500 health. And a farm level 3 has 5,000 health only. And I'm just gonna show you guys what... Um, Let's go. I'm gonna just Five, grab this farm. Four. By the way, the farms outside are always gonna start with the level 2. Also with the Rohan faction. Uh, unlike the farms inside your base, Let's go. because outside is kind of you know more you know dangerous spots Stop and easier out. to take down. They're That's why you're gonna get more money at the beginning of the game at least from the farms outside of your base than from the Run farms inside of your base. Okay, Robert, just gonna show you guys. Um, remember, the blacksmith level two has four thousand five hundred health, and this farm level one. One second, one second. It's gonna be level two as soon as it's up. By the way gonna show you guys beautiful level 2 has 3000 health Ryan. so with that being said a blacksmith is way harder to take down Ryan. than a farm uh, and not only up. that is the reason obviously why the blacksmith is a bit more expensive because blacksmith kind of replaces the armory every faction has to kind of buy besides mordor mordor doesn't buy upgrades as you know there is no way you can buy forge fleets and heavy armor with the mordor faction nice. but rohan has to make a structure which costs 1300 resources Isengard has to make a structure for 1200 resources. Gonda can buy that from a structure from that from which you are also getting money over time. So with that being said, make it at the beginning of the game. It's a bit more expensive than a farm, but it's gonna give you, you know, the same amount of resources, but it's gonna be a bit tankier and harder to take down. Beautiful, guys. All right, um, coming, coming next to the heroes. So heroes, we have Faramir, Boromir and Gandalf. And in the meantime, we're gonna capture the outpost here. I'm just gonna show you guys how our outpost looks like. Outpost is pretty identical with all the factions. With the outpost, you have a citadel in the middle of the map, or in the middle of that outpost. Unlike the citadel here inside the main castle, this one is not able to shoot, by the way. And you can now here build three, um, you have three spots, pretty much, right? Um, what you want to build in situations like this is you want to make a statue in the back. The statue in the back is gonna increase the damage output from your units around that by 100% and they're also gonna level up to you know twice as fast that's incredible and you can also put archers man. inside that if you want to protect that outpost and the statue in the back is also gonna buff the archers inside that citadel so the archers are gonna hit like a truck <laughs> and you can make a well to heal up your units uh, you can go for the second statue just in case one of them gets destroyed the leadership doesn't stack by the way that's really important to mention you can even make a tower here if you want to 
towers are very strong at the beginning of the game, late game. Uh, also really important to mention, guys. For example, this upgrades here, this one, is also gonna affect the towers like this. So this tower is also gonna deal 125% increased damage, if you didn't know. Right, but they are really easy to take down. Um, talking about the towers here from the Gondor Castle, also forgot to mention that one. Unlike the towers from uh, Rohan, they can't be taken down by anything else but siege weapons and trolls, okay? So archers, combos, they are not able to target the tower from Gondor, but they are, howsoever, able to take down the Rohan towers. If that makes sense, because Rohan is kind of like a wood country, and Gondor is like a steel country, you know, the white city, Minas City, it's beautiful. Now we have heroes we on the fields, we have the land. brothers, Faramir and Gondor Boromir, they're stand. always gonna come out on the fields level 3. Boromir is the only guy, or only hero in Gondor, that actually gives you some decent leadership in terms of damage output. So he gives you 60% increased damage. There is a hidden ability from Boromir which is not being shown here in the description. Boromir is able to knock down his opponents. I'm just gonna Come show you guys me. what I mean Advance. with that. In the meantime, we're gonna take a look we into his brother, busy. Faramir. Faramir is a ranger slash like knight it. hero from Gonzo. You can, you know, toggle to the, you know, ranger mode or to the knight mode. Um, and if you are being a ranger, you can also use your sword and, and your bow. And your, if you are using the bow, you have a wanding arrow, which is dealing a lot of damage to single targets, dealing bonus damage to trolls and bonus damage to Nazgûls. Look at this. You see, he is able to knock down his opponents here. That also works against heroes, by the way. So uh, you can not out damage Aragorn, but you might potentially be able to knock him down all the time. Beautiful. Be uh, Farami is getting stealthed like the ranger units from Gonzo when he's around the trees. And if you can now use the hold fire, he's not gonna automatically attack the enemy units. With that being said, the enemy is not gonna be able to see him unless they're gonna just walk really close to him, right? Beautiful. Uh, Farami is a leadership just like his we brother, uh, which is increasing the armor from the Nervia Allied units by 50% and also gonna give you fear resistant. Fear resistant means when your units are only level 1 and the enemy has Nazgul who is using the Screech or for example Boromir is using the Horn of Gonzo or Aragorn is using his Elendil ability Fear Resistant is gonna block that fear even if your units are only level 1 on top of that we have also 50% increased armor Bonding Arrow again is super powerful just like his brother he has also Captain of Gonzo that is able to level up those units Works on every unit from Gonzo, on the soldiers, on the tower guards, on the Gondor knights, but also on the rangers. Same Gondor with Boromir with his stand. captain of Gonzo ability. It gives Come you it me. gives you the exact same um, experience. Beautiful. And now let's come the to the last guy strong. remaining. The most powerful hero that is Gandalf the Grey. Joking, Gandalf the Grey is absolute trash. He is very worthless for 6,000 resources. I wouldn't go for it. Um, but when you get him white, that's gonna change everything. By the way, with the white spell, Gandalf's powers are gonna recharge twice as quickly. He's gonna deal 100% increased damage from his powers and gonna become also 300 extra health on top of that. So it's gonna be really, really hard to take down. And he's also gonna be able to get on his shadow facts and to get some mounted. Here's a visa blast. You can always use shortcut, uh, shortcuts. I would always recommend you guys that's gonna, you know, make you micro much, much faster with Gandalf. Lightning Sword is a unique ability. And like all the abilities from Battle for Middle-Earth 1, if you cast this once, and if you want, if you wanna cancel that, it's, as you can see, it's going on cooldown. So, you wanna be wisely with the choice of the Lightning Sword. It's a skill shot ability, by the way, it can miss the targets if you miss the hitbox. Uh, is that light a super powerful, potentially even the most powerful single target ability? Which is able to hit one target only but deals massive damage and Un you know unless the units are really grouped it's gonna deal a small amount of splash damage to them so when for example gondor knights are in a situation like this from the opponent and you cast it right here there is a high chance that you can kill two units at the same time and what of power is kind of kill surrounding enemies self-explaining kind of thing i mean it's powerful gandalf and aragorn are the, are the only heroes from battle for middle earth one that have a level 10 ability so getting him level 10 might be you know, changing the outcome of the game and might you be, you know, might you make to, might you make to, I don't know how to speak today, might, uh, might make you to win the game, you know, beautiful, all right, um, what else is gonna be important, you can also make trebuchets on the wall, if you have the firestone upgrade from the workshop, you can also give them firestone upgrades, you can always cancel that when it's getting attacked, um, you can, and I'm gonna just show you guys something, 
that's gonna be funny because that's gonna be like a bonus from this video. I don't know if you wanna watch that, but let's see. <laughs> um, did you know, guys? <laughs> Did you, know, <laughs> did you know, guys, that you can kill your own units? Ripping I'm just gonna show you. As you can see, we are closing the gate. So, there is only one way to exit the base right now for the guns off. Or, you know, for the soldiers to enter the base. But we're gonna exit the base Over now here. with guns off. Look at this, this guys. Way. And as he's gonna be in the gates, I'm just gonna demolish that with D. Gandalf is gone to the darkness. I mean, that's kind of troll, right? You can do that, do that also when you're playing 2v2 with two, with two your allies. Leave that also standing. works pretty much, by the way. Uh, unfortunately, we just got the power points for White. But as in the movies, Gandalf has to die first and then he's gonna come back stronger. Okay, guys, if you have any other questions war. about Gondor faction, let me know in the comment section below. The build order is simple. You wanna always make a farm and a blacksmith inside your base first. And then go for stables after one more farm. And then uh, make two Gondor Knights, fill up your base with, um, with blacksmiths. And then... You know, get three Gondor Knights, get your upgrades here from the stable. Go for the rush to the Mordor base, Isengard base. If you are playing against Gondor Rohan, you want to fight for the map control. With map control, we are talking about those settlements, about those farms. Because map control is everything in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Later on, you want to switch to the Katas. They are going to be obviously necessary if you want to break the walls from your opponents. If you if you are playing against Gondor and, or Rohan, you want to also make some tower guards to protect your catapults against the horses from your opponents so you don't keep them losing all the time. Uh, you can also have Boromir around for the increased leadership. Uh, Gandalf's leadership is also insane, by the way. Gives you also fear resistance, like Faramir does. Gives you 50% increased armor, like Faramir does. But also gives you 200% increased combat experience. Knights With that being said, when, for example, Gondor Knights are able to last hit a hero, like Aragorn, when, Arag when Gandalf is close, they're gonna hit from level 1, level 10 immediately. So the level up is gonna be crazy. Level ups Riders. mean a lot in Battle for Middle Earth 1, by the way. A level 10 Gondor Knight can actually fight against le two, Gondor two level 1 Gondor Knights with full upgrades. Super easy. So levels are super impactful in the game. That means that you wanna keep your heroes or units when they're highly leveled alive. Alright guys, that was the very first Battle for Middle Earth Gondor tutorial. Uh, unfortunately, I don't make, I don't know how to edit videos, so that was kind of, you know, we'll from the scratch. I hope you enjoyed this one. If this was helpful and if you want to see more in the future, drop me a like. And what faction would you like to see next? Isengard, Mordor or Rohan? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.